Welcome to our very special launching this afternoon. As we begin, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our Archbishop. Um, sorry. <laughs> of our Archbishop Robert Rivas, our head table, as, it's, as they sit, <laughs> Father St. Rose, our guest speaker, Vladimir, sorry, Vladimir Lucien, and our introduction of our guest speaker, Everest de Jean-Marie. So we ask you now to stand for the national anthem. Please. The national anthem will be done by Trevor St. Omer. Thank you, Trevor. Be seated, please. I will now call upon His Grace Archbishop Robert Rivas for our opening prayers. Please stand. This book touches on the dark side of St. Lucia. Today we, in our liturgy, we read from Ezekiel chapter 34. And in Ezekiel 34, God said that he is the good shepherd and that he will search for those who have strayed in the mist and in the darkness. We ask the Good Shepherd who is today celebrated in our worship for the end of the year in our liturgy as the king of the universe. We ask the Good Shepherd to lead us out of darkness into the light and to be the light for us. so that we will not stay in the darkness, nor want to stay in the darkness, or be consumed by the darkness. We ask that our lives will be filled, our culture transformed, our hopes renewed by the promise of our Shepherd King to lead us out of darkness into light. Amen. Please be seated for sure this time. <laughs> As you can see on the program, there are quite a few remarks to be made. 
So my remarks are going to be rather brief since there are so many more to speak. We welcome you here this afternoon. Thank you for giving up your afternoon on a Sunday, which is always a special day for most people. I know Father St. Rose is very happy that you have accepted his invitation to this launching. Over the last year or so, I have been um, able to assist with editing over a dozen books. I didn't know that St. Lucian's wrote so much. <laughs> However, this particular book is unlike no other. I know each one is different, but this one is particular. And Father St. Rose has gone to great length and taken much time and effort to conceive this book and to publish it. In this day and age with so many other attractions, it's sometimes difficult to know if your book will be accepted. He has journeyed on throughout, through thick and thin, and I wish to congratulate him on his efforts for such a particular topic. I will now call upon Mr. Marius St. Rose, who will give the author's profile. Thank you very much. I'll use the protocol that has already been established. We have an emerging tradition in the St. Rose family to designate the oldest living male as our patriarch. I am not the one, and the patriarch should be the one to make the presentation today. However, he passed about eight, nine months ago, and the succeeding patriarch is either out of the country, and therefore Father St. Rose called me to fill the role. I suppose I do qualify because my grandfather, his 13 children, my father was the eldest, and I am the eldest of his children. He had me at the age of 56. Since I think that if you wish to know a person, you need to study his roots and origins, his nurture, a bringing and acculturation, and the constellation at birth, I will introduce Father Lambert in terms of family background, the person, the author, and the book. Father St. Rose has been very instrumental in bringing the family together. He conceptualized the family logo which was designed by Sir Dunstan St. Omer, and with the inscription, I am the vine and you are the branches. It was officially released at Father Lambert's first formal family re reunion, which was also the occasion of Father Lambert's silver anniversary. That must be about six or seven years ago. What, if you're going to look at the St. Rose family, we ask, what are the family values? It is not documented, but what I can glean, it's the family first, and the family in terms of its importance, its essentiality, a need for cohesion, and cooperation. The family first, then the other family value is education, 
the pursuit of it, and the useful application of knowledge acquired. And the third family value that I can glean is virtue, virtue, particularly among the women. The earliest trace of St. Rose is a black slave of free men who, had, who migrated from Martinique after emancipation by England because England emancipated the slaves before the French. He had three known offspring, one of whom was Elivik, who had 13 offspring from the union in a combination of five males and, three, and eight females. One of the attestations to the virtue is the fact that the St. Rose name, you hear it all around the place, the St. Rose name has been propagated by 42. And the 42 are largely from the five males. The eight females had only two children between or amongst them, and the females were the last. Father, Father Lambert is the offspring of one of the 42, and therefore my second cousin. It should be noted that Father Lambert's father, one of the 42, has more offspring than the, com the combined rest of the other 42 St. Roses. As I scratch my head, I say, the Lord knows the restraints and sacrifices that Father Lambert has made. <laughs> Born in 1952 at the Elevic St. Rose eight-acre estate, quote-unquote, of Greenwood in Mondedon, Castries, which was a 10-minute uphill walk from the Castries RC Boys School, he was the seventh child and third son in a union of 13. Today, he is one of the, today he is one of the two surviving male siblings. Somebody asked me a little earlier, and let me disclose, while I was the only one of the third generation of St. Roses of 42, not to have attended secondary school, not here or anywhere, it would have, he would have been the first of the fourth generation to do so, and we are not more than eight years apart. And I say that because there is the myth that the St. Roses are privileged. I knew him as we grew up on the same estate, but believe you me, he was reserved shy, reticent, and self-effacing, and apparently timid. In a, con in a conversation with my first cousin, Dr. Richardson St. Rose, we expressed considerable surprise that this young man developed to be not only his nuclear family's premier scholar, author, and pastoral shepherd to thousands of souls, but also to hold that position for the whole of the Elevix and Rose bloodline. Moreover, this apparently timid boy has become a visible antagonist to God and man's foremost adversaries and has physically and spiritually recovered souls from demonic possessions back into God's fold. He has clearly demonstrated, excelled, and arguably exemplified, and even excelled in the family values of family, education, and virtue. While he may not have made souls, he certainly saves and rescues them. Let's look at the author. His vocational profession is different to the other St. Roses who have concentrated on and pursued careers in worldly and or 
money-related disciplines. His has been more spiritual, philosophical, and altruistic. A very wide reader, he has also two full-length publications and, so, and, and some short ones in prose and poetry that reflect his interests, which are religion and liberation theology, our culture and history, social, economic, and even political conditions. Expect more literature from him because he has ideas and intentions to work on many themes and subject matters. I know that he has ideas and intentions to organize and interview prominent and unknowledgeable persons to record our oral history so that more of our past can be accurately documented for posterity. The book, despite its title, which is subject to diverse interpretations and value judgment,